Imagine being part of the government who six years ago voted in favor of listing the IRGC. MPs passed a motion in this House almost four years ago to designate the IRGC as terrorist. In 2018, every member of this Liberal cabinet voted to list the IRGC as a terrorist organization. The government, again, uh, including the, the, the Prime Minister, all of the ministers uh, who currently sit uh, within the Canadian government, voted to ban these terrorists from Canada. And imagine seeing what happened this weekend with 300 projectiles firing directly on a Democratic ally. Six years of foot dragging, where the answer, it's been asked hundreds of times in this House, what time today will the government list the IRGC as a terrorist organization in this country? When will the government prioritize the safety and security of Canadians and list the IRGC as the terrorist organization that they are? When is this government going to list the IRGC as the terrorists that they are? Today, in the House, Madam Speaker, the answer was exactly the same. We're trying. We have recognized that Iran is a state sponsor of terrorism. Uh, we continue to move forward uh, in uh, holding the IRGC to account. We're consulting. We will take the advice from our national security advisors and officials who make these recommendations. We're working on it. This has been the answer for six years where the Prime Minister himself got up and voted to ban the IRGC. Today, the mullahs in Iran and their proxies are fighting wars that kill Canadians. They killed hostages with Canadian citizenship. They have killed 55 Canadians in the downing of flight PS752, 30 permanent residents. The plane crashed just minutes after takeoff, slamming into farmland just outside of Tehran. With regards to the Canadians killed, we know that a number of them were from Edmonton. We spoke to a member of Edmonton's Iranian community who says that they are absolutely devastated. Among the dead are two young girls, a newlywed couple, several university professors and graduate and undergraduate students. So, so many young Canadians who had such a bright future ahead of them. This group killed 55 Canadian citizens whose only crime was to get on a plane when they were, where after they were shot out of the sky by a terrorist organization that can still legally operate in Canada because the Prime Minister has not put them on the list of terrorists. We know that they intimidate Canadians in every single neighbourhood. We know that the Chief of Police of Tehran had worked out in a good life fitness in Midtown Toronto. We know that senior members of the regime are eating steak dinners in fancy restaurants in Toronto openly with impunity. This is after eight years of this government. And the worst, Madam Speaker, what we saw in the streets at the very moment the projectile missiles fired on a Democratic friend and ally, there was celebration and jubilation. Everyone, I would like to make a quick announcement throughout the process of bringing this announcement. The Islamic Republic of Iran has just sent tens of drones towards Israel. The failure to denounce that from a party that we know is capable of denouncing all kinds of protests in this country. If you were at all concerned with the desecration of a statue in front of Parliament Hill and you have said nothing about what is happening in our streets, the mobs of protesters with covered faces brandishing swastikas, I can't help you. But what we can do today as a country is ban the open operation, the ability to raise money, the ability to organize of, of the IRGC terrorists that live amongst us. We know that there are 700 here. There's an estimated uh, uh, 700 Iranian agents um, living uh, in Canada. 700 IRGC terrorists have been able to legally operate on our soil and live in luxury with the money that they stole from the Iranian people. And yet we get the same 
answers. It's been asked no less than a hundred times in this house. What more do they need to act? When will they finally use the criminal code, list the IRGC as a terrorist organization, and shut down their operations in Canada? Mr. Speaker, what will it take? How many murders? How many threats against Canadians? What needs to happen in order for the government to do the right thing? What I don't understand is that the government hasn't given any reason to not ban this organization. And if this weekend and the events from this weekend haven't changed that answer, then I think we have a really, really big problem with this government. I think we have a really big problem about how it treats terrorism, how it treats national security in this country, how it treats the very communities that elect its members to come here. There are thousands of Iranian Canadians, freedom-loving Iranian Canadians, that fled the regime to find safety and a better life here in Canada. And the expectation, their expectation from their government is that they will be kept safe. They will be kept free of intimidation. They will be able to go to school and go to work. They would be able to talk to their MP from their home without being terrified of being watched by the regime. That is what we're dealing with in Canada. That is what the community is dealing with in Canada. They've said so. Do the Liberals believe that it's acceptable for Iranian Canadians to drive to a location far away from their homes to speak to their MP with a blurred background about their fear of reprisal for protesting Iran's brutal regime? That's what's happening in Canada. And we know that Canada's spy agency is investigating credible death threats from the same regime against our citizens. They are begging for this government to keep them safe. This is, a, this is a community that is terrorized by a regime that they left. Can you imagine leaving a regime, uh, leaving and fleeing a regime to a better life in Canada, and then you have to call a member of parliament from your car with a blurred out background because you are afraid of the actions of that regime. And they continue to call on this government after six years of doing nothing to at least list these operatives as the terrorists that they are. Will the Prime Minister have the guts to stand in today and announce he's banning this terrorist organization? Will they finally list the IRGC as terrorists today? Why won't he stand in his place today and ban this group? Will the Minister have the guts to ban these terrorists today? It's time for the Liberals to stop defending the IRGC and it's time to start standing up to them. List the IRGC as a banned terrorist organization. I'm going to ask one more time, what day will you list the IRGC as the terrorists that they are in this country? There are people in this country that want to see this government take national security and terrorism seriously. And it is about time that they do that. It is about time that they do that for every single freedom-loving Canadian who sees what's going on in their streets, where the progressive left has been co-opted by the Iranian regime to destabilize our own streets here. This is a government that doesn't take terrorism seriously. This is a government that doesn't take national security seriously. And soon there will be a government that does. But until then, they can do one thing. They can ban the IRGC from organizing, from fundraising, and from living freely here and intimidating our own citizens. That's what this motion calls on, and I hope they vote in favor of it. Sure.